If at the start of BoJack Horseman you had told me that I'd be sitting down here today to talk about Mr. Peanut Butter and make a whole video on him, well, first I probably would have asked you, uh, why are you asking me that question? How'd you get into my house? Please leave. Please, please don't hurt me. I, I just want to live. Please. But after that, I would have said, eh, you know, I don't know about that. I kind of doubt that. Of course, it always seemed like he could progress into a more interesting character, but at the beginning, I mean, Princess Carolyn, Bojack, Diane, they all had a lot more stuff going on. Mr. Peanut Butter, I wasn't really as focused on his arc long term. But sure enough, when the series ended, Mr. Peanut Butter's arc was complete, and it was just as important as all these other characters. Let's talk about Mr. Peanut Butter. Mr. Peanut Butter, how? Who's that dog? Mr. Peanut Butter. The big gesture isn't enough. You need to be consistent. You need to be dependably good. You need to do it every day, which is so hard. In Bojack Horseman's first season, Mr. Peanut Butter frequently comes across as a bit of a jackass. He's so insecure about his relationship with Diane that he thinks Bojack might steal her away. He lies about stealing the D, underplays Diane's interests, and puts on a display of fake intimacy while proposing to her. Of course, none of this makes him an outright villain or anything like that. But at the least, he doesn't seem like a good fit for Diane. In fact, he's pretty inconsiderate. As Diane will later state, Mr. Peanut Butter always assumes everyone wants what he wants. Even if he's trying hard to make others happy, he has trouble putting himself in other people's shoes or understanding their perspectives. This results in him failing at the little things, at all those little moments that add up over time but might not individually mean all that much. The small disagreements, the minor upsets, or the little good moments too. Those moments of understanding someone else's position, experiences, and opinions that add up throughout a relationship, for better or worse. And yet he has moments where he seems to make up for this. After brushing off Diane's interest in the Diane Arbor exhibit, he buys tickets to go see it in a different city. He tells Diane that, if getting married stresses her out, they don't need to get married at all. He's fine just being with her. However, in this case, he's still making up for a prior mistake, when he proposed to Diane with a fake moment of privacy. So yeah, he does a good job sometimes, but he often does a good job at cleaning up a mess he could have and should have avoided making in the first place. Here, he uses relatively big gestures to mask the other mistakes he makes. In the long run, this results in a load of arguments and misunderstandings, even though in the short term, it leads Diane to believe that this relationship could work out. And the audience is liable to see it that way too. Even though he makes mistakes, he tries his best to make up for them. At other moments, he puts together elaborate grand gestures. These aren't necessarily in response to a previous mistake. In fact, they usually aren't. So what could possibly be wrong with them? Well, nothing in and of themselves. After all, there's nothing wrong with throwing a big surprise party for your wife. But there is a problem with that if she's explicitly stated that she doesn't like that. She's content with a simple private life with Mr. Peanut Butter, but that's not how he sees things. He loves her and he wants to show her that through these big gestures. Here, disparate styles of communication cause massive issues, and a lack of listening and genuine compromise results in various messes and arguments that could have been avoided. See, Mr. Peanut Butter isn't good at compromises. He doesn't even really understand what they are. As he says in Season 6, the perfect compromise is when no one has to compromise. This mindset results in various unrealistic ideals and expectations. As he says to Diane, he wants every day they have together to be a happy one. At first glance, this may seem like a good goal, but it's impossible. No one should expect every day with someone to be happy. What if something goes wrong in their life? What if there's some difficult circumstances they have to work through? Again, many of the little moments, those moments that people spend together all the time in a relationship, whether they're good or bad, are cast aside. One thing that results from this is that Mr. Peanut Butter has difficulty distinguishing between small moments of intimacy and grand gestures. The most prime example of this comes from The Bell Room, when Diane simply discusses her fantasy of having one as a little girl. To her, this is a small moment, a discussion, and that's important, but just a discussion. But to Mr. Peanut Butter, it's an opportunity for a big moment, for a grand gesture. So he goes out and he gets it built while they're on their trip. Again, this may seem like a nice thing, and for some I'm sure it would be, but for her, for someone who doesn't like these grand gestures, well, it's a nightmare. This was something personal she had shared with her husband and no one else, and he made it into a project, into a bigger deal than it is. This little moment is blown out of proportion to become a grand moment, and in that process, it ruins what made it special in the first place. From there, their marriage collapses, but really it's been collapsing for some time. Even so, if Mr. Peanut Butter had done a better job of understanding that the little moments matter just as much as the big ones, well, then maybe this marriage would have been more successful. Maybe his second one would have been too, maybe his first one would have been, or maybe not.
Either way though, Mr. Peanut Butter's style of communication is potentially overbearing, at least for someone like Diane, and seemingly for a lot of different people that he chooses to be with. But what do I mean by this style of communication? Well, I think Mr. Peanut Butter has a touch of... Do you know what I do while you're at work all day? I mostly just sit right there, and when I hear your car in the driveway, it is the best part of my day. We've reached the third hour. The water bowl runs dry. The food in the dish grows scarce. Greg told me that he was going out for milk and a pack of cigarettes, and I should have known. I should have known that he wouldn't come back, but I did know, didn't I? I always knew, I always knew that Greg wouldn't come back. I'm alone now, and I'm afraid I always will be. So I'll wait and hope, hope that he actually comes back. Now, in all seriousness, separation anxiety is a serious mental disorder. I don't want to make light of that. But it really seems to me that Mr. Peanut Butter is displaying some of the symptoms of it, and it also happens to be frequently discussed with dogs. Was this purposely done by the creators? Hell if I know, but I think that connection's there. I mean, in the latest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders, the DSM-5, separation anxiety sure does a good job of describing some of Mr. Peanut Butter's actions and feelings. Here, for example, the manual describes how indirect expression of fear of separation may be more common in males than in females by limited independent activity, reluctance to be away from home alone, or distress when spouse or offspring do things independently or in contact with them isn't possible. On top of that, he gets distressed when anticipating or experiencing separation from a major attachment figure. In this case, the major attachment figure is Diane. Without Diane, Mr. Peanut Butter's sense of identity crumbles. More broadly, without other people, his identity crumbles. He wants every day to be a crossover episode of some sort. For this reason, he inserts himself into Todd's Disneyland project, he simply waits for Diane to come home when she's out, and he constantly surrounds himself with hordes of people. I mean, for almost the entire show, he never has a moment to himself. Really, when is he ever alone? He makes his house into a set for a TV show, a place to store items for his and Todd's zany business ventures, the campaign office. He always needs to be surrounded by a production by co-workers, by fans, by loved ones. Basically, he can't stand being alone. Naturally, this puts a huge strain on his and Diane's relationship. He doesn't want to be away from Diane, but he also constantly surrounds himself with other people and projects. This way, they have very little real privacy, and even when they go on vacation, Mr. Peanut Butter goes off to hang out with some fans instead of spending his vacation with her. And he isn't away for just a minute. He goes off for so long that Diane falls asleep while waiting for sexy time. So sure, Mr. Peanut Butter says that he wants their new house to be their space, that he doesn't want Diane to feel like a guest in her own home. But why is it that she would feel like a guest? Well, it probably has something to do with the TV show set, the stacks of random crap, and ex-wives running political campaigns. These actions could potentially be motivated by a persistent reluctance or refusal to go out because of a fear of separation. He wants to keep his work around Diane because he doesn't want to be away from Diane for any lengthy period but this has an unfortunate side effect. Now, every one of Mr. Peanut Butter's problems is a relationship problem. It's impossible for him or her to separate their personal lives from their work lives because they don't get a personal life. No matter how much Mr. Peanut Butter believes that they are separating their personal and professional lives, he can't stop this from happening. Now, I don't want to come across like I'm seriously attempting to diagnose a cartoon character with a specific mental disorder. I'm not a clinical psychologist, I'm just a guy who watched a little bit too much Bojack Horseman. But I know enough to know that a lot more goes into diagnosing people than just reading through the manual quickly and going, yeah, that sounds about right. But the DSM-5 provides a useful way for categorizing some of his behaviors, and it works well as a launching pad to discuss Mr. Peanut Butter's wider mental struggles. At first, it might be easy to view Mr. Peanut Butter as someone who doesn't have any mental health issues or struggles because he's usually such a happy guy, especially when we compare him with some of the other miserable characters in Bojack Horseman. But Bojack Horseman does a great job of showing how complex mental health can be. It's not like struggling with a mental health issue means you can't be happy. People can have these problems and still be happy a lot of the time, and I think it's genuinely great that this show brings that into its story through Mr. Peanut Butter in particular. Okay, let's get back to Mr. Peanut Butter's specific problem. His need to be constantly loved and surrounded by others sabotages his most important relationships. In order to become better, he needs to realize that no matter how many fans love you, they can't replace true intimacy. Of course, his inability to figure that out results in a whole lot of pain and suffering for both himself and others. But his journey involves growing out of this separation anxiety, and learning that it's alright to sometimes be alone. 
In fact, it's more than all right, it's necessary and healthy. So there are two questions that need to be answered. What caused this mentality in the first place? And how does he learn to grow out of it? Ooh, I'm not good at giving bad news. I'm more of a good news guy. Very few people relish telling others bad news, so it's not hard to understand why Mr. Peanut Butter doesn't want to dish out the negative stuff. But his inability to give out bad news reaches pathetic levels when he asks Diane to tell Pickles that he cheated on her with Diane. Cheating on her is bad enough. Now he's going to try to get his ex-wife to tell her? Mr. Butterboy can't even nut up and tell his girlfriend that simple bad news. In fact, his attempt to tell her goes so wrong that he gets engaged to her by the end of it. But even if it's presented as a joke, there's a clear reason why Mr. Peanut Butter's like this. Mr. Peanut Butter was sheltered really sheltered, to the point where he never got told bad news in his own life. This man was told that his own mother and father went off to the farm instead of just being told that they died. He never got a chance to cope with that sort of loss on his own terms, or to learn what it means to get bad news when he was younger. At least that's what I assume if his family would go as far as to tell him that to stop him from learning about his own parents' death. I somehow doubt he was getting told about other really bad stuff that went on. As he says, nothing bad ever happens on the Labrador Peninsula. Besides, he simply stumbles upon success in almost all areas of his life other than his marriages and intimate relationships. He gets handed the lead role in Mr. Peanut Butter's house because he wanders through the right door on the right day at the right time. When he loses all his money, he immediately gets another high-paying Hollywood gig. He gets on the Filbert show despite failing to be a tough guy. Birthday Dad turns into a success even though no one really knows what it's about. And most ridiculously, all his spaghetti strainers and other random business ideas somehow come together to save an underwater city in a way that only he could with all of these items. Basically, if we take his marriages out of the equation, things in his life just tend to work out. He doesn't need to try all that hard. He doesn't need to deal with loads of adversity. It just happens. Because he's Mr. Peanut Butter, and because people like him. This way, he's constantly surrounded by good news, by success, and it's easy to see why that might reinforce his inability to properly handle mistakes or negative situations. After all, what type of personality would this sheltering and general lack of adversity cultivate? Well, for a good thing, he has a really positive outlook on life, which results in moments of genuine kindness. Overall, actually, he's just a really kind guy. For example, when Bojack is worried he'll Bojack things up with Hollyhock, Mr. Peanut Butter thinks that must be a good thing because he really likes Bojack. Then, when he realizes Bojack's putting himself down, he simply tells Bojack not to do the things that'll make her hate him. Now, that might not be the most comprehensive advice, but he's being nice and essentially telling Bojack that he likes him a lot. He's showing Bojack a perspective that's different from his own self-loathing perspective, allowing him to see how other people could see him. In essence, he's trying to give him a more positive outlook on the situation he's in. But not all negative situations can be solved with such simplistic thinking or with just having a better outlook. And that's where Mr. Peanut Butter fails. His upbringing is likely where this unrealistic and harmful idea that he wants every day with Diane to be a happy one comes from. It's a weird form of perfectionism. Like he's unwilling to accept that he'll fail or that the world will fail him or that things might just go wrong and he might have to cope with that for a bit. To him, perfect isn't unrealistic because everything in his life other than his marriages works out so perfectly. In fact, he finds it so hard to believe that anything could go wrong with his brother that he gets angry at Diane for even bringing up the prospect. As he says, just because you have a shitty relationship with your family doesn't mean every other family has drama too. So yes, he can be extremely kind, but he also has difficulty navigating imperfect moments in relationships. Especially moments where trying isn't enough, where you need to change your strategy instead of just pushing forward. His own experience is so different from other people's, including Diane's, that it's hard for him to relate to a normal amount of suffering or struggling. In essence, he lacks a well-rounded personality that can properly cope and deal with regular life events, both positive and negative. He's experienced too much of one type of thing, the good type of thing, and now his personality is stunted and unable to accommodate this type of complexity. But what happens when Mr. Peanut Butter does encounter adversity that goes beyond his marriages? And what happens when he makes a mistake that is undeniably a mistake? If your dreams don't come true, it's probably because you just didn't have the right attitude. This is my dog, Lily. She's a sweet girl and we're trying to teach her some tricks. You know, sit, stay, roll over, get the bad man in the jugular, the basic stuff. And I mean, you want to get to teaching them while they're still young, because as folk wisdom tells us, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Do I know if that's true? Have I read any scientific literature on that? No, I have no idea. 
but it relates to Mr. Peanut Butter's struggle to grow a pair and grow up. Almost everything I've described about Mr. Peanut Butter so far points to him being a static, unchanging figure. After breaking up with Diane, he quickly finds a new girlfriend. He takes his three ex-wives and his girlfriend to this party, even though something always goes wrong. He continually makes poor financial decisions, and so on. He's just a go-with-the-flow kind of guy, and since that tends to work out with him, why would he ever change that? Now, to be fair, Mr. Peanut Butter will get things done when it's obvious what the right thing is to do and when no one else is acting. For example, he saves Bojack from drowning, and he pulls Bojack off of Gina when no one else is willing to act. And this should be praised, because even though the right thing to do can be obvious, that doesn't mean that people are going to act. The bystander effect gets regular people to not act in situations where it really seems like it should be obvious to, but Mr. Peanut Butter doesn't let that stop him. But what about when the right thing involves going against an authority figure? Well, when Diane wants to go after Hank because so many of his assistants have accused him of sexual misconduct, he simply wants Diane to not make a big deal out of it. I mean, he's working with Hank, and if Diane does that, then I'll mess up his work, won't it? When Diane is getting an abortion, he tries to be nice and supportive, but when the doctor says that Diane will have to go through much of the suffering on her own, like watching these puppy videos, Mr. Peanut Butter immediately concedes defeat. He doesn't argue at all. And when he's the authority figure, good luck. As we see in the underground episode, he can't lead at all, and his desire to please everyone can be destructive when he's in a leadership role. In this case, it leads to a hellscape of sorts where everyone starts turning against everyone and they even try to kill him. And in the first place, the only reason they end up underground is because he allows fracking in his backyard, because he's not willing to just say no. But when he cheats on Pickles with Diane, everything changes. Because even though he's made mistakes in the past, he's never done something so obviously wrong. He's never done something that makes it hard for him to face another person. For the first time, he feels like garbage, and he doesn't know what to do with that feeling. For once, he can't simply surround himself with other people to make the problem go away. No, his guilt eats away at him when he's with others, so he needs to learn. And in learning, he grows into a better person than he was before. As Bojack basically tells him, he needs to accept the bad parts of himself, the things he's done wrong, because trying to hide them won't do anything. He might think he's brushing it all under the rug and then no one will notice, but the poison seeps out, and people will be hurt, even if he doesn't mean to do that. Of course, the road Mr. Peanut Butter takes to becoming a better person isn't as simple as him recognizing his own failings, accepting them, and changing. It's never quite that simple. It takes him a long time to tell Pickles that he cheated on her, and when he does, he comes up with this zany idea that she should cheat on him too. Because that way, they'll be even. But even after she's slept with at least 32 guys, it still hasn't quite worked. But he keeps trying, keeps going, keeps pushing ahead with this specific relationship. He's not willing to give up on this, and once again, he has the mentality that anything can be fixed if you just have a good attitude. Still, he eventually needs to let go of Pickles. He needs to accept that this relationship is done, and that he did something that destroyed it. Through that, he begins to separate himself from others. And in separating himself, he can learn who he is. Outside of all this people-pleasing, and parties, and girlfriends, and wives, he learns that he needs to have his own identity outside of all this other stuff. That he can't just sit, stay, and roll over through his whole life. No, he needs to change and learn who he is on his own. He needs to be comfortable being alone with himself. And that's just as important a message as any other in BoJack Horseman. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. I'm going to have some other BoJack Horseman videos at some point, And I have a bunch of other stuff that you can check out too. Also, I just wanted to take a second to mention that all the music from my videos is always in the description. So if you're ever curious about what music I used, at least if it's a video that's even remotely recent, it's going to be down there in the description. I'm just mentioning that because a lot of people always ask. I also wanted to specifically thank my patrons who are very patient with me because it takes me a while to get things done, apparently. Going to try to be a bit faster in the future, but thanks anyway. You're the best. Anyway, I hope you have an awesome day. Bye-bye for now.